This week on MS Refresh, all that is new, all that is great, and all that is underwhelming in Microsoft Teams for July 2022. Plus, pour one out for wikis. All that and more. Subscribe to stay in the know. This is the MS Refresh Show. Hi there, and welcome to the Matt and Sean 365 Refresh Show. Get your kicks here on episode 66 for the work week of July 18th, 2022, and our second episode devoted to Microsoft Teams news coming to you from the West Coast. My name is Sean Bugler. And from the East Coast, my name is Matt Wade. Matt Wade, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Did you like that ad lib? <laughs> that was good. I didn't write that. That was, uh, that was clever on your part. You're worth keeping around. I am all right. Um, happy belated emoji day, world emoji yeah. day. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was, that was yesterday. You, and of course, to those of you who celebrate happy world emoji day to you as well. Uh, for those of you that do not know yesterday, July 17th was uh, world emoji day. According to, I presume Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't celebrate, you need to get your priorities straight. <laughs> We accept all faiths and denominations here at the MS Refresh Show. Um, yeah, no, so it, it's uh, Matt. I was taking a look at the, the the views over the last couple of weeks, and it seems like the the people love Teams. They they they, they love that we've carved it out. They love that we're focusing on it here. So it's nice to have it brought back. It was a great idea on your part. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that the thought? Uh, the app with the most, uh, you know, monthly active usage in O365 probably is, uh, or at least with the fastest rising is the one that people want to hear about is you got to keep up with this stuff unless you are, you know, some sort of um, backwards organization like yours. It's all over Zoom, but then also using Power Platform. Zoom, oh, it was the Power Platform is an intersectional tool. It's not oh about my. Microsoft, even though they create the best first party experiences. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I'll say that we, we we have a little bit of work to do catching up wise on the Power Platform Showcase in comparison to Teams, but I'm up to the challenge. Uh, I'm just going to keep making mine raunchier and raunchier until we get higher <laughs> views. <laughs> you just want to get those uh, viral views out of the uh, the pushing the uh, the envelope just too far. I look forward to I'm that. I'm here for the clicks. I don't yeah. care if they like the content here. Yeah. Here <laughs> Although I will right, well. say that based on some of the comments that we saw uh, in last week's episode, the people love the controversy. There was a lot of back and forth with respect to cloud attachments versus just showing the links inside the emails. Uh, we had a lot of split disagreements with respect to that in the comments there. Oh, I am. Um, I am uh, still on team cloud attachments. Uh, give people no. the buttons they already know and let them uh, let them use that and have that be their entry point because that will just get people to use links more often. We can only hold people's hands for so long at a certain point. We have to teach them why these things are the way they are. Yeah. That's so idealistic. It's adorable. Anyways, uh, there's a lot of really exciting news uh, to talk about here. You ready to rock? I am, definitely. This is the news. Back again with another exciting collection of Microsoft Teams updates for the month of July, starting with meetings. Microsoft Teams sees the following coming in July. Join a meeting by digital code will be rolling out later this month, catching teams up with something Zoom has had for a long, long time. Team Zoom rolling out to GCC2 bonus. The PowerPoint feature currently known as Presenter Coach is extending to teams under the name Speaker Coach, uh, which will give you feedback on your speaking and presentation skills, both real time and after the meeting. This is also rolling out to GCC. The ability to see meeting chat bubbles pop up in Teams rooms displays Catching up with the desktop app is on the way. The Q&A app is coming to meetings so you can have moderated chat. If you've used Q&A in a Teams live event, it's the same experience. You have to add it to your meeting to make use of it. You also may want to have, uh, you may also want to disable meeting chat in the meeting options ahead of time. Otherwise, they both show up negating the purpose. Reusing polls from previous meetings so you don't have to create them from scratch is on the way as well. Speaking of the polls app, it's also getting the rating question type to expand the use of polls in meetings. This is also coming to GCC as well. The ability to delete, to delete your call history so you aren't reminded of the time you called your drug dealer, Matt, from work coming to 
commercial and all GCC clowns. <laughs> Specifically for our government friends, you can look forward to these items. GCC High is getting live transcript for teams meetings and the co-organizer role, which has moved beyond all the initial drama, so just drop it already. GCC DoD is getting the ability to disable or enable attendees video, uh, which is a very useful feature for those people who have very distracting cats who need attention. Jumping over to Teams collaboration, expect these in July. The biggest item is likely Teams Connect or shared channels, which are currently rolling out to all commercial and GCC tenants. Get ready, folks. Teams chat will be available directly in Dynamics 365, annoying every SharePoint owner out there who has asked for a chat web part since Teams was introduced years ago. For our government friends specifically out there, share to Teams the ability to share URLs from personal apps or tabs is also making its way to GCC clouds. All GCC clouds, I might note. Teams admins. For all the Teams admins out there, a few things to look forward to this month. The ability to customize your personal admin homepage with movable widgets. Also, the ability to update user policies by group in the admin center rather than user by user, which I can only imagine has been an absolute nightmare for some of you. And lastly, our notable additions or notable notables. Some new items to look forward to that have been added this month that are set for further in the road. The ability to assign people to specific seats in the together mode uh, view in meetings is coming in September. So you can finally placate that manager who absolutely has to have that chair by the fake window. The ability to pre-assign channel members to breakout rooms and channel meetings. So if a member who wasn't explicitly invited joins the meeting, they'll still have a breakout room assigned. This is coming in August. If one person remains in a stale meeting, great branding. They'll receive a prompt to leave or teams will end the meeting automatically, presumably to save on energy costs. That's coming in August. The graph API access to teams meetings transcripts following a meeting is coming in November. And most notably here in our notable notables, the teams wiki will not be added to new teams and channels starting in August, which may imply some feature rollouts for Microsoft loop. That one is in the admin center and has not made it to the roadmap as of yet. That was the news. All righty, well done, sir. Thank uh, you very much. Boy, that's a, that's a good amount of team stuff coming. Um, does any of this resonate with you? Like, do you manage any of this stuff on the, the team side at your place? I mean, manage it, yes. Uh, does it impact me dramatically? No, not necessarily. I think that there are just, you know, just given that we consider ourselves a, a, a best of breed operation. So we, we try to make sure that we have the best tool for the job, whatever that happens to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I always pay attention to what's happening in the team. So it's not just for the sake of the show, but also for the sake of making sure that, you know, Zoom and Slack are still the best tools for the job in our organization, because the day that changes, you know, the, the calculus changes. Uh, yeah. The, the tools that we advocate for change internally. Um, and of course, our, our uh, contracts and finance team would love us to stop spending extra money on tools that technically right. we have access to for free. Yes, um, exactly. But anything for my users. Yes. That, oh, that's well done for the, the one straight person <laughs> that might catch this episode. That's well, well played. Uh, so what, uh, anything stand out for you that you thought was uh, interesting? You know, I, that last bit there, the, so Microsoft announced uh, via the admin center, I think it's supposed to hit the roadmap relatively soon, uh, that the default wikis. So this is completely separate from like wiki pages from from ye of old who worked in SharePoint. Uh, they're the wiki. What would you call them? Apps, wiki apps that have been kind of yeah, default tab. provisioned to teams, teams, uh, as well as new private channels. They get spun up and uh, they've always kind of just been this like lukewarm, good enough but they weren't really connected with anything. They weren't as robust as say one note. It was kind of, it felt like somebody you ever seen those uh, where somebody will, you know, stop you on the street and say, Hey, draw the pizza hut logo from memory. Uh, have you ever seen anything like that? Or like wine and painting. You like, look at this beautiful work of art and then you have to recreate it yourself. Wiki I have not, tabs, go on. Wiki tabs feel like somebody had 30 minutes to look at one note. Oh, and then okay. try to recreate it from memory. Yeah. And that was as far as they got. And that was true in 2017. 
uh, and it has not evolved to my knowledge at all since then. Uh, it's just kind of been this annoyance for many of us because it just exists. It doesn't seem to have any sort of parallel to the SharePoint universe. It doesn't seem to have any parallel anywhere. It just kind of lives in this weird silo. So Microsoft announced that it will no longer be part of the default provisioning process when creating new teams and creating new private channels uh, starting in August, which is fantastic because when those, those very limited instances where I do create teams in Microsoft teams, uh, <laughs> top tier branding, Microsoft <laughs> um, step one and step two has always been created and then immediately remove the wiki tab because it is just outright confusing. Users think it's one note. They realize that's not one note. And by the time they figured that out, it's usually too far down the road for us to do anything other than say, well, now you have two. Um, what's your perspective on this? Uh, so I, I think wrote a team's book twice. I was just going to say, I'm pretty sure that I even wrote in the book, like this is how it's done, but we recommend that you don't use these at all. Um, because they, so here's what, what happens is you create a It's really the channel creation process that creates the wiki. Now, if you create a team, you get a general channel and the general channel is created with the team. So that general channel creation creates a wiki tab, but then any new channel, even a uh, private standard doesn't matter is going to get a wiki tab. And those wikis, the data behind it gets stored in the SharePoint site behind the team, which always just baffled my mind or baffled me because you can't search wikis. They're not searchable. So they don't come up in any search results, Teams or SharePoint, even though the data is in SharePoint. And um, there's no version history. So if you make an edit to something in the wiki, uh, if you delete the whole wiki, it's gone, uh, which also doesn't make sense because SharePoint is built on the whole concept of, uh, of version history. Uh, so I just recommended to people either create templates, Teams templates um, that don't include them. So delete them and then move forward. Now, granted, you add more channels, you still have to deal with the wikis, but... Um, the other sort of workaround that people would push out there was use them as like an about um, resource. But, you mm -hmm. know, if it's an about and anybody wants to make a change to it, they can. There's nothing stopping them right. from doing that. So um, I've never been a fan. Uh, I've always recommended people not use them. And uh, I've had a bunch of discussion in, um, on LinkedIn this week, people asking, you know, what, what have you seen people use these for in the past? And I said, well, people use them. Uh, it's usually sure. arbitrarily and not strategically in any way because it's just there. And they're like, huh, that, that's interesting. I can have different sections. I can link to the section. Like that's useful, right? Uh, but the problem is that uh, most people don't like think about what are they going to use it for strategically. So it might just be a random place for somebody to dump a piece of information once and then never look back at it again. And you can't search. So you're not going to find it even if you were searching for it later on. Um, I think this is a positive change. I've always not been a fan of the wikis. Uh, I'm actually, uh, believe it or not, I'm an administrator on the English Wikipedia. And like, so I, I had, and I've spent a lot of time, <laughs> I spent a lot of time <laughs> writing wikis, or like articles or content for real, real legitimate wikis. wikis, right? And like, this doesn't meet the threshold of what a wiki is. Um, yeah, it does have, you know, the ability to use some markdown to link back and forth. But like, that's the absolute basic foundational stuff. So it's not even really a wiki, which I've always found kind of annoying that they even use that name. Um, I realize that's more of a pedantic, you know, actually it should be, but it really, you know, <laughs> is. So it is a good day that this will come. Uh, they're not deleting existing wikis. They're not, de they're not removing the app. They're just making it so that when a new channel is created, a wiki tab doesn't show up, which by the way, in multiple tenants that I have, when I create a channel, it creates two wiki tabs. Now I hate the wikis to begin with. Two now I hate them, them twice Somebody's as much. Rubbing Salt, right. Somebody's rubbing salt in the wound. Right. And I have open tickets about it and nobody can figure it out. And they basically just go, sorry, you know, just, it's just deleted. It's one extra click. And it's like, oh gosh. And this feeds into my theory that in 2017, when they announced the feature, when Teams was released, they immediately disbanded the team that created that, this, <laughs> uh, like pseudo wiki, uh, because nobody like now nobody knows what to do with it. So all they have left to do is just kill the feature. <laughs> Are you That's saying that the team's wiki is just an access database somebody made 10 years ago and then left the company three years later? This is a fresh reminder that we all have tech debt. Some of <laughs> us are just a little bit more impactful at scale than others. Yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> uh, now, so the, uh, the, I think the thing that's sort of interesting here is that, uh, you know, the wiki has seen no changes since the, uh, the app rolled out, right? Um, OneNote has always been an alternative. So if you're going to get rid of the wikis, it probably means there's going to be some sort of... Um, alternative available. And that just makes me think immediately of Microsoft Loop. 
um, with the, Talk to me about that. Yeah, yeah we were well, talking the, about this before the show. With the loop components available in private chat uh, and now in Outlook, and we talked about that in the episode last week, um, I'm, I'm thinking it just makes sense that that can be a replacement uh, for um, the wiki in Teams because wikis aren't just in channels. They're actually also the meeting notes tab for a Teams meeting, which is a nightmare. And that's one of the reasons why wikis are probably used so much as they are because when you see the meeting notes tab, you just think, oh, that's useful. I'm going to use that. Right. Well, meeting notes and agenda are now or will be uh, loop components included with all meeting invites. So if that's already covered and the meeting notes wiki tab for meetings is now going to be a loop component, that just tells me that wikis in general are expected to be replaced by loop components. Now, which one? No idea. Uh, the uh, meeting notes one, I think, is just going to be uh, space for different types of components. The agenda is there's literally an agenda component that they, uh, they're they rolling out. So I'm just thinking there's going to be a generalized loop component that uh, will be available within channels, which is not yet the case. Uh, and I'm just assuming, just like you know, uh, meeting recordings, for example, if you create a, a meeting recording in a private meeting, it shows up in your OneDrive. Well, if you do it in a channel meeting, it shows up in the channel files tab. Why wouldn't that work the same way for uh, a loop component? So I, I'm thinking that timing might work out well with an announcement that, hey, BT Dubs, loop is now available uh, in channels, which I think is going to be a big deal. A question for you. So you know, when you think about like OneNote, like I'm a relatively avid OneNote user, as mm -hmm. I think you are as well. OneNote, you know, a, a lot of people don't use it like this. A lot of people just kind of take it, that initial text block and use the vertical board. But it is, you know, just a bunch of like components, different separate text boxes floating around. What's to stop Microsoft from just dropping? You know, we got the question last week about where the desktop app is. What's to mm -hmm. stop Microsoft from just saying, well, instead of giving you the loop desktop app, we're going to transform OneNote. We're going to kind of swap out these, you know, just what they are now, text boxes, and we're going to give you loop components across this infinite OneNote canvas. Because, I mean, ostensibly, what they proposed, a lot of people were like, this is OneNote. Anyways, so what's mm -hmm. to stop Microsoft from just saying, hey, OneNote is now capable of this, you know, pin a OneNote tab and it's got all these loop components in there. You can, you know, interact with them because OneNote has always notably been able to interact with Outlook and you were able to bring meeting notes in there based on templates. So what do you think? Well, I think actually all the things that you just said are the reason why they can't really touch OneNote. I think OneNote has too much of a niche, uh, I'm going to say crazy, avid <laughs> user base. <laughs> Uh, that would cause uh, absolute mayhem if they tried to make all those major structural changes. But the fact that OneNote has all these tentacles that have reached out, OneNote is very unique in that, like, it seems like anything anybody asked for for OneNote, they got, and the product yeah. group just built it. You know, especially once education started pushing hard on it, the education space is a lot of clout, and they just kind of do it. So if there's all these things that reach out to Teams or to Outlook or, you know, plugins to other, you know, apps and stuff... Think about the impact of having to change all of that. Like that's going to be really difficult. Um, I don't see why they couldn't have a menu for adding loop components. I don't know if you can just replace those text boxes. Although I will say that is my least favorite part of OneNote is how restrictive those text boxes make me feel, um, which loop components wouldn't fix because they'd be their own text boxes anyway. But if you're going to have every text box in a, in a OneNote notebook moving forward default to being a loop component, unless somebody specifically chooses a text box, that's a lot of loop components being saved places. And like, I don't sure, think people I mean, would realize one, one note file is already just a folder. Yeah. And in fact, well, that, so that was the other thing I was going to say was that one note is already, I'm going to say an untrustworthy file type <laughs> because it's such <laughs> a pain to deal with. You can't transfer it to anybody any longer. It's not like you can just like drag and drop it to, you know, uh, an SD card or a flash drive, or I don't even think you can email it as an attachment anymore. Right. Like it has to be, it's not like a physical tangible thing any longer. The file is more a pointer to, like you said, a folder that has stuff someplace, yeah. uh, which has been really difficult uh, with some of the places I've worked because people want to, you know, send a OneNote file and it's not external sharing. It's they want to send that OneNote to somebody or they want right. to save it locally or whatever else. And like, you know, as far as I can tell, you can't really do that because of this, that new um, format that they have. And it's so like, it seems like something they should have fixed by now. But if you have a OneDrive, if you're syncing OneDrive through Windows, uh, and you have uh, OneNote full, uh, files in your OneDrive, it doesn't even show that it's a OneNote file. It shows, it knows that it's an HTML file or a, some sort of um, web file, and it still uses the icon of of, uh, of Edge, as in like, right. if you double click this, it's gonna open an Edge, and it's like, 
<laughs> somebody missed that that boat on that one. You know, like you're right. you're really intended not to use the file explorer to get there. You're supposed to use OneNote. So these days, like when I'm working with my colleagues, it's like never go to it in in file explorer open it up in the browser and then click open in desktop and then from that point forward it's almost like the OneNote app is its own little os for OneNote files you know don't give microsoft any more ideas yeah. edge is already getting absolutely destroyed with new features yeah i know oh and, and not destroyed in a negative no, way no, but I know, overwhelmed but yeah. with right exactly uh edge os coming soon yeah <laughs> Um, so that's interesting. I appreciate your thoughts on that one here. And I guess we'll see. It seems like we're going to know sooner rather than later what kind of the vision forward is in Teams channels, because surely they wouldn't just take this away without some sort of recommended path forward. And you say surely, I say hopefully, right? Like that's what I'm thinking is I, I don't know if they are. I haven't you know gotten that information. I'd like to know it, but uh, I would like to think that they would talk about a replacement and considering the fact that meeting notes is a wiki it's probably the most active wikis people use because it's not just wiki which is a word that people don't mm -hmm. necessarily know very well but it's meeting notes and if that's being replaced by loop why wouldn't the wiki uh in channels be replaced by loop as well it makes sense yeah uh matt wade what else do you have for us oh well yesterday was uh what was it world emoji day and again Boom. Happy World Emoji Day to those who celebrate. So uh, the Emojipedia, which if you're not familiar, you should be because we've covered it here before, is the official source of all Unicode emoji documentation. Uh, but they have their own blog, and it's actually kind of a fun thing to read if you have you know, a whole lot of things better to do. They pulled Teams Emoji back into the spotlight again, which I can't believe it, but it was a year ago that that blog post got put out about the new emoji that Teams is going to have. And I double-checked the roadmap. That is due in August. We are supposed to get the full emoji set, 800 plus emojis, not all, I don't know, like 3,000 or whatever it is in um, uh, the Unicode listing. But these are going to be all animated and they should be coming soon. So this article was sort of to catch up on the one year ago. Uh, they did not mention the fact that it's coming in August. I had to go look in the roadmap, but they did mention coming soon to all Teams users. Uh, right now it should be out to, uh, I think, people in like public preview or, um, I don't know, maybe um, one of the other early access uh points but uh yeah reminder that those uh those new emoji or should should be on their way and uh i hope you had a very very splendid uh world emoji day can i just say how much i love the fluent emoji like i i hope that this raises the bar for every device manufacturer every platform uh because these are just such a joy and they're not it's not just that they're like fun because like you can do this, have this quality, this caliber uh, and, and not necessarily be kitschy. And I think the fluent emojis prove that out. It, it's just I love these and I hope that Apple is paying attention. <laughs> Google's changed their emojis like, you know, 12 times over. But one more time for the road, Google. Uh, <laughs> they're just such a joy. Uh, and I'm excited to see them show up like this alone is almost worth the advocacy uh, of switching to teams. <laughs> um, I still prefer apples as the best, although this does show um, I, I actually don't know what the underlying technology is. The reason that these can be animated is because they're going to be using the same tech that Skype has had for however many years Skype has had their emoticons. Right. Sure. So, the uh, head hitting the wall. Uh, the yes. Wall. That was my yes. favorite. One. I would love to know the metrics and how many people use each one because I bet you that's the one that's used one of the most. You know they collect that data. Somebody oh, they sitting have on to. that information. Yeah. Open yeah. the vault, Microsoft. Yeah, they absolutely have to. Yeah. Um, let us in. Let us in. Uh, so yeah, this is um, interesting because I think um, if there's an opportunity for animation, that'd be pretty slick. But when you think about it, when you know when these organizations get the Unicode, you know, description of what each of these um, things has to be. They can do it themselves and design it how they want to, which um, can be a little bit of a scandal. So, for example, the um, the lotus flower uh, that was put out recently, apparently Apple went with uh, just a basic water lily design. They didn't think of the <sighs> difference between the two. And lotus has a very, very significant meaning in Southeast Asia. So yeah. that really annoyed a lot of people. And I can understand why. Um, but uh, if if they can move forward with animation, 
generally speaking, that would be, I think, uh, pretty cool. I just don't know if that underlying tech uh, covers that in, um, in how these things come. I, I guess it's just a, a Unicode character calling a, a, an image file. So if the image file is a GIF or something, you know, theoretically it's it built be into the OS. I mean, you know, I yeah. think that the same argument can be made about, you know, like iMessage, you know, Apple devices yep. talking to Apple devices using yep. Apple emoji. Uh, you know, if it's calling the Unicode, Google knows what to do <laughs> with it. Uh, Apple will know what to do with it. Microsoft yep. will know what to do with it. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, we will uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, there are a few, I think. I don't know what if these were the... What is Cactus Love? So I'm pretty sure these are examples of the ones that are Microsoft only. Uh, they do not oh. exist. <laughs> uh, they come from Skype. So like that head, the head bouncing into the brick, brick wall uh, is not an, a, a, an emoji. And most of those are not, uh, the ones from Skype at least, are not emoji. They have aligned a lot of them to an emoji character because Skype's emoticons predate the Unicode emoji set that Ahead rolled out time. to... Yes, they were a little bit. Well, yeah, but even like, uh, didn't a didn't AIM have their own, you know, moving emoji? Oh yeah, they all did. Or emoticon, I mean. But yeah, so uh, I think that's kind of interesting, and uh, we will see what happens uh, and how Apple, Google, and uh, you know, Facebook, Facebook. I always thought it was weird that Facebook and Facebook Messenger have different ones. Um, Thank God and, they're not in the enterprise space. Oh yeah. wait, <laughs> or are workplace. they? <laughs> right, or are they? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what I got. Any uh, last things on your end, Mr. Bugler? Good riddance to Teams wikis. <laughs> Gonna leave that there. Ouch! It's poor, you know. What did they ever do I to hope you? That, I hope that whoever created that feature, that product, has gone on to bigger and better things, uh, and that that was a great stepping stone. Um, but good riddance. Yeah, it's a shame that they didn't that, that the organization didn't do more with them because it was one or the other. You kind of had to cut them or you had to really grow them. And uh, I think they probably made the right choice in that one. So we shall see. All right. Well, I think that about does it. Uh, thanks so much for watching. As always, a like and a subscribe is much appreciated. Leave a comment below to start the discussion. Um, next week, we'll be having a special guest, or at least fingers crossed that we will, to talk about another project that might be interesting to people um, in the Microsoft 365 and specifically Power Platform space. Uh, so on that note, Sean, thanks for joining me this week, and I can't wait to hang out with you and everybody else again next week.